you've got questions, O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge, just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Real Life Real Crime is a true crime podcast brought to you by Woody Overton and executive producer Toby Tomplay in conjunction with iHeartRadio and Cloud 10 Media. descriptions of acts of violence or that are of a sexual nature. It should be for people that are 18 years or older. Heed my warning, people. I do not get the facts of these cases off of the internet or from some television show. The facts I'm retelling you were presented to me by the victims of the crimes or the perpetrators who committed the crimes against the victims. My description of the crime scenes or what I saw with my own two eyes. If you're going to get offended, please turn this podcast off now. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. As always, I'm your host, Woody Overton. And y'all, today I'm going to be continuing Not True. I got cut off last time because of my technical errors, and we are um, video recording this again I think we had a situation worked out. I apologize about that. But I still have two stories I don't want to tell. I want to finish the one that I started, then I have another one. I don't know how long I'm going to go. Hopefully, it'll, we can get it all done in this hour. But that being said, you can stay tuned for announcements at the end of the show. But I love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Love you, patron members, convicts, lifers. I love y'all. Thank you for everything. And let's do this. Okay, so when I left you last, just to recap, if you haven't listened, well, I'm not going to give you the whole recap, but I had the two guys who had been seen in the van under arrest. We, we did a search warrant on, or an arrest warrant, no-knock arrest warrant on them um, with the men in black about, I don't know, 5 o'clock in the morning. Now, look, I've been working this case for many, many, many hours now, y'all. We also had the recover the van and those three people in the van, two males and a female, and I had been to the jail and interviewed them, and they had told me who they got it from as a crack loaner, meaning that they gave some rocks to somebody to be able to drive the van around. They thought they were going to get to use it the whole weekend. Well, they didn't know it was going to be a shit-hot case, right? So, But regardless, they're still in possession of stolen property. And... But they, you know, I'm almost like, hey, this, this rape happened in the van. Was y'all like, they were like, fuck no, fuck no, Wolf. And 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 I, I knew them, y'all. I mean, the same frequent flyers they're dealing with, especially before meth ever came around. So I got statements from them and who they had got it from. The I went to the two, to the two males that were under arrest. We got that we got on the warrants right, and I brought them in and interviewed them one at a time. And I brought the first one in, advisors, Brian Rice, and I knew the dude. I'd arrested him several times. 
and and he was like, man, it's bullshit. You know, you got us for a van. Da da da. I said, well, here's the problem, fucker. Here's the problem. It's not just a van. I said, the chick that owns that van. He said, yeah, I know who she is. And he, he said, we ain't steal it from her. Not really. I said, well, you can tell me about it. not really in a minute. I said, but the chick that owns the van is saying y'all raped her. And he said, what? I said, his eyes got big and his mouth fell open. I said, that's right. She's saying y'all raped her and then kicked her out right at that. Oh, no. said, y'all kicked her out in the woods. He said, that's a lying fucking bitch. She's a fucking liar. And I said, well, I mean, you understand your rights. Do you want to talk about it? And I said, because the rape charges are fucking coming. Here's, here's the deal. I said, me personally, I bet you she's been on that pipe for a while now, and she went down there, and then she dressed up. Y'all maybe made an arrangement, you know, to have sex or whatever. And you went down there and did it, and for whatever reason, you kicked her out and, and took the van. I said, but here's the problem. We did a sane a sexual assault kit on her, and they're going to get your semen out of her. Or if you did it in her mouth or you know, the pubic hairs or the shit that you microorganism that you can't find. And if she goes to court and says, y'all, oh, first of all, she said you fucking kidnapped her at gunpoint, then drove her back to that location and raped her, okay? And then here this motherfucker was livid. And, and, and I said, now... I'm betting dollars to donuts that your fucking your jizz is gonna be on her somewhere. Your pubic hair is gonna be on her somewhere, or whatever that y'all had sex in the van. I said, do I think that you carjacked her? I said, mm, probably not, but I'm working on that. I said, do I think you, you know, just pick some random chick at at a stoplight and put a gun to him? And then took her in the woods and raped her. Mm, no, you, you don't have any sexual rapes, any, any crimes of sexual violence in your jacket, right? I mean, you, you're a dealer. That's what you do. And he's like, man, I ain't raped that bitch. And he said, well, we didn't rape that bitch. And I said, well, hold on. And I said, I'm not done yet. And and I just told him, I said, it's now going to be a, I said, you may, you may not have raped her, but I guarantee you fucked her. And he's like, ah. I said, no, no, just hold on. I said, I personally, picked up the bag of evidence from the hospital and I have it here locked up in the refrigerator and it's got somebody's shit in it, pubic hairs, sperm, whatever. I said, I'm betting it's coming back to you and your homie and and when it does and we're going to test you, I'm going to get a fucking DNA swab for your shit if you're not in the system already and I'm going to test you and it's going to come back and she's going to say it's rape and guess what, bitch? You're going to get a fucking armed robbery charge for the carjacking, you're going to get a rape charge. And you know what, t- what time's like for tree jumpers, right? And he was shaking his head. And y'all tree jumpers are what they call, one of the derogatory terms they call rapists in prison. So I said, it's just going to come back on it, no doubt about it. In whatever shape or form it is, and it's going to be matched up. And she's going to stick to her story because she has to now, right? I said, I don't know where the disconnect came, where you kicked the fuck out of the vehicle and took it, other than maybe you just want to take the vehicle and loan it out for some more rocks so y'all can keep getting high. I said, but I'm going to give you one chance to tell me the fucking truth. I said, I ain't being around the bush with you. I don't fucking need you. I don't give a fuck if you go to prison for the rest of your life. I said, because Lord knows, for every time that you've been arrested, there's probably a million crimes that you've committed. I said, so really, this one's on you. I said, but I will help you out if... You helped me out. Shit. That motherfucker had diarrhea of the mouth. He couldn't wait to tell me what happened. And what he said was, he said, well, he says she'd been buying rocks for us. He said, you know, I'm not the main, main dealer. He said, but I get my shit and I up on the weekends on Fridays, meaning y'all, he got his new stash in on Fridays. And me and my the other guy that was with him, she had come down sometime Thursday afternoon and was looking and told her to come back tomorrow and they were getting a new load. She said, he told me that she said, I don't really have any money. Or I mean, He said, well, you got something to trade. And she was like, well, what you talking about? He's like, I mean, you know, we, we men's, we like to have sex. And she was like, all right. She said, I'll do it. And she said, how much? He said, you come down 
and, and you know, we'll, we'll go to a place and we'll have us a party and you can smoke all the rock that you want to, but we're going to have sex. And she said, I'm cool with that, right? That's his story, and y'all believed him, to be honest with you, right? And I, <laughs> where he fucked up was, he said, and I said, well, tell me what happened. And he said, well, she came down and she picked us up on that, on that turnaround I told y'all about that's hard to get in and out of. She came down, she picked us up. He said, we went straight to the location. And I said, what, where was it? And he told me. And then they actually did go there to the, to that spot. And he said, he said, that's not the first time we've been there, Wolf. He said, I, we've been there, smoked with her before. And so she knows that spot. And he said, the last couple of times she came, we, we over, went over there. He said, we made, you know, advances at her. and But she was paying cash money at the time. And we never really fucked around or anything. I said, all right. He said, but this time she was going to fuck us. And I said, all right. He said, so we went to that location. And he said, and we we get in the back seat. We hid the pipe. And and she went down on me. And I went down on her. And y'all, he's talking about oral sex. And he said, and then my friend, she went down on him. And then we started having intercourse. Well, he didn't say intercourse. So he said we started fucking. He said, now, we were smoking the whole time. I said, well, how much did you smoke? He said, man, we must have smoked eight or nine rocks. Y'all think about crack cocaine is they say once you you hit that first one that, that you spend the rest of your life trying to chase that an initial high, okay? And a crack cocaine high doesn't last that long. When you hit it, you get that intense euphoria, that that rush, and but the more you smoke, the more you need to have to get that high, right? So for them to smoke eight to ten rocks while between three of them, while they're they're uh, engaged in sexual acts, then yeah, that's not a lot, okay? And it, it doesn't take long. And he told me, he said he. <laughs> I said, tell me what happened with the van, bro. I said, why does she end up at that house? And I said, she's claiming that y'all raped her. You put her out uh, right there and the thing. He said, she's a lying motherfucker. He said, we got done. He said, I got in the driver's seat, and she was sitting in the back getting dressed, and my, my buddy got in the passenger seat, and we started to pull off. And she says, I want to drive. And he said, but she said, I want some more crack. She said, I'm going to smoke some more. He said, stupidest thing I ever did. He said, I told her, well, go ahead and get out and come around to get in the driver's side. And he said, we were right there close to that house. He said, they had a bunch of cars at that house. They must have been having a party or something. And he said, she got out the uh, sliding door. And he said, well, as soon as she got out, we hauled ass. And he said, I took the van. He said, I'll take the charge for the fucking van, but I ain't raped that bitch. And she agreed to it the whole nine yards. I'm like, Boom, bitches, I got you, right? So what am I going to do now? I offered him a polygraph. I want to make sure. Now, the one thing you always want to do on on victims or alleged victims of sexual assault is you really, really don't want to go at them unless you absolutely have to. And by go at them, y'all, I mean like, you know, come down hard on them because if you fucking get it wrong, you're re-traumatizing them. And normally... In the polygraph world, you will never, ever, ever polygraph an alleged victim of rape, okay? Unless it's the last circumstance that you have, last chance, and you really shit's just totally not adding up, and you and you basically can prove it without being able to prove it. That's all. I mean, just it's a last resort deal. And I can tell you, I've only done a handful of them my entire career, but they were full of shit. And and I offered them a polygraph. And he's like, fuck yeah, I'll take the polygraph. I don't care. And and so we did it. And the, I asked him straight up. I said, are you being truthful to me? The, the relevant questions would have been something. And I'm going off the top of my head, y'all. I said, you being completely truthful to me in your statements about y'all had prearranged to have sex with her for cocaine that, that night. He said, yes. No deception indicated. I asked him, had... He'd been inside that. Oh, that's the other thing, y'all. I forgot to tell you, the van, I was going to have it impounded, but it was still sitting secure on her lot. I said, but have you been inside that van before? Because he had. So he told me they didn't have it arrived. Every time they'd meet and they would go back and smoke back there, 
that she was always in her van, but she could never stay long. She could only stay like 30 minutes, and she'd hit that pipe, boom. She'd give her $20 rock. She hit the pipe, and then she's leaving, right? And, you know, but I asked him, did you, did you force her in any way to have any type of sexual relations? No, he passed, right? And then um, I asked her, are you being truthful about kicking her out of the van. I didn't say kicking. I can't remember how I said it. It was something like about you sped away on you know when she got out of the van to get in the driver's seat, and he answered that, and there was no deception indicated. So he passed this polygraph. Now it's getting late, y'all. I mean, I've been up for, you know, it's the day shifts out and everything else, and, and I'm exhausted. But I got the other cat in, and they had them totally separate. They, they had them in separate cells. They weren't able to converse, and he started – trying to play like he didn't know anything at first. I said, well, you're a dumb motherfucker because your homie just ratted y'all out. I said, but here's a charge. The charge is going to be armed robbery, rape, armed robbery, rape, kidnapping, basically, you know, armed robbery, kidnapping, rape, and then whatever else I put on you. I said, now the deal is I already know that, you, that y'all fucked. And I said, I took it to the hospital. I followed it to the hospital. I have all the evidence. It's going to be your sperm, your pot in the sperm. And, and I asked the first guy, did they wear condoms? And he said, no. I said, but here's the deal. She's saying that she was an armed robbery. You have kidnapped her and raped her. He was fucking, then he got mad too, right? And he realized writing's on the wall. I said, look, your homie already took the charge for driving off the vehicle. He's going to get that. I said, but right now, she's sticking to her story. Now, I haven't talked to her this morning, but she's sticking to her story that y'all carjacked her, kidnapped her, raped her, and then put her out in the woods. And then he came around and he sang like a fish and he gave it basically verbatim. He said she'd been down there smoking for months. And at first she would just come through and get some. I don't know who turned her on to it, but according to them, if she would just get some and she would leave. But then she started getting, you know, they wanted to go get high whenever she's going to get, I mean, she was an attractive female. I guess they were. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And calming like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble Meal Kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. 
Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something, and all the dishes were fire, but this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real. We've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door. So see what a difference Gobble will make for your household. Right now, they're offering my listeners a fantastic limited time deal. You get $120 off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. Gonna try to get sex from her at some point anyway, and and then he admitted and he said, "Hey, she came and got us. She came down on Thursday, looking to score. Told her to come back on Friday. She said she didn't have any money, and and we told her, you know, we can work it out for for sex, and she readily agreed. Okay, and he said they went back there and the same thing. Got in the back seat. They smoked a." a, a it's not a bunch of crack. I can't. You can't call eight rocks between three people a bunch of crack, but it's not an insignificant amount. But he he said that you know oral sex was given, oral sex was received, and then intercourse was done. And he said the whole thing didn't take twenty twenty five minutes, and, and then they were done. He said she wanted more crack for, than what she had got to smoke for having for having fucked him. That's when. The, the, the old boy that was driving said, well, come on, you know, come, first of all, we don't have any more. Come on, you can drive or whatever she had asked to drive. His story buried it a little bit on that part, but everything else was true, was straight true. But he said, I didn't know when she got out that he was going to leave her right there in front of that house. He said, but he left her. And we took the van and we traded it for like 10 more rocks, right? A, a crack liner. So... I didn't waste the time on polygraphing him. I was exhausted. The, you know, the, the time had marched on when I needed to go home and get a shower and a little bit of sleep and figure out how I'm going to come back and hit this chick, right, this this lady who reported this crime. But one of the things that I started thinking about once I was home and I had taken the shower and I lay down, I started to go to sleep. And it's, you know, for some reason I sleep better in the daytime anyway, but usually my thoughts come to me at like three o'clock in the morning, but it's that semi conscious state. And I was in that semi conscious state and shit, it hit me. So she said she got carjacked at the red light in that town. So that fucking red light doesn't even turn red unless there's other vehicles at the light. Okay. And then I started thinking, well, shit, but what if they got a camera? and what have you, and then I tried to sleep, and really I couldn't. And so I got up and I went, I drove to the town, and went and met with the chief of police, a buddy of mine, my, a buddy of mine, and I asked him, he said, absolutely. And I told him what direction he said she was coming from. He said, there's no way. He said that that light is set to go off if a vehicle is coming from whatever direction, it's set to go off to stop it so you know you can get through without getting smashed, right? She's saying, she had told me, and I think I, maybe I didn't mention this at the beginning, she told me there was nobody at the stoplight when she got carjacked, that she was going to make a turn through the intersection. Now, according to the chief of police, and I went and tested it myself, this, this thing doesn't even turn. You can sit there all night long, and that, that light to turn will never turn red or stop you if there wasn't another vehicle there. 
So I was thinking, mm, that's another strike against her, right? So I got it together, put it all together, and I, uh, I called her in. I said, look, you got to come in and talk to me. And she was like, well, I, I want my band back. I want my band back. I said, look, come in and talk to me, or I can come pick you up. I need you to come sit down. We need to talk. I said, you can bring your husband or not. I don't care. I said, but, you know, I don't think you probably are going to want to have your husband in the room when I'm talking to you. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, you just need to come up here, and we'll talk about your van. You need to come to my office. And so she did, and she didn't want to. And I mean, fuck, I'd have gone to her house, but I wanted her on my turf. I wanted her to be sitting in my house, if you will, okay? And she showed up without her husband. It was it was her, some friends, some chicks she brought with her or whatever, and she entered. Uh, Tina came and got me and said, hey, these two ladies are here to, to meet with you. And I, I said, it's fine. I think I had, I think Brian Paul was with me. I can't remember who was my partner at the time. But I had, had the office down the stairwell. And it was probably, so I went and got her, and I said, hey, come on down. So need to talk to you about some stuff. And she was all defensive already, kind of standoffish. And, you know, she was dressed uh, in jeans and a shirt. And like I said, she was, you know, pretty well put together female. I mean, y'all, when I say that, that's not a sexist statement. And what I'm saying, uh, I'm comparing that against somebody who's been on crack for a long time, all right, where they're all rocked out and strung out and, and you know, unclean and having bathed because they don't care. All they care about is getting high. She wasn't at that point yet, right? She had a good family, good kids, good husband, good job. Everything was fine, except for at some point she got, well, I didn't know yet. But, so let me just finish this. Bring her in. And I sat her down. And I said, listen, I said, we need to talk. I said, before I do that, I'm going to advise you your Miranda rights. And this, and I did. And she was like, why are you? Am I under arrest? I said, no. I said, but I want to make sure that you understand your rights. That way, if you lie to me or you lie on this evidence and stuff, then, then I have repercussions. I can come back against you. And she was like, I don't understand that. And, and why you would do that? I said, look, I advise everybody their Miranda rights now. And when I go to... McDonald's and they asked me, can I, you know, can I help you or, or whatever, or today's specialist, such and such, they say anything, I, I advise them of the rights. I said, it's just standard, okay, because I never know what people are going to tell me. I said, so do you understand your rights? She said, yeah, I understand, but I'm not under arrest. I said, no, you're not under arrest. I said, now here's a consent to questioning part in a letter. I said, this, I agreed to answer questions. I understand no Threats or promises have been made to me, blah, 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 whatever, right? Standard form. And I read that to her, and, and she signed it, okay? So I said, listen, we got to go back to whatever night it was, Friday or Saturday night, Friday night. And and I said, tell me again, you're at your house. And she said, I already told you all this. I said, you didn't tell me shit. I said, you, I mean, I said, I'm not trying to be hard on you, lady. I said, but this is an armed robbery kidnapping, aggravated rape case, and I need some more information from you, okay? I said, you've already been through the sexual um, assault rape kit. You've, you know, we had everybody in the world working your case. I said, we got your band back. She said, I want it. I said, that bitch is going to the crime lab. I said, it's an active crime scene. It's been sealed up. You were raped in there. Then there's going to be evidence that those black males were inside that vehicle. And she kind of like got a little stoic. And I said, not only that, I said, the sexual assault kit, that's just coming back. And whatever DNA you had on you, or in you, or whatever, hair, sperm, whatever it may be, it's going to come back, and we're going to get a match to those two black males, and they're going to go to prison for the rest of their life because they raped you, right? And she just she was looking at me, right? Looking at me, just staring at me. I said, okay, well, let's continue. I, I said, go back to that night. I said, you, 
you, you got off of work at what time? She told me. And then I said, well, did you change clothes when you get off of work? Or, or was it the same work clothes you had on? She said, no, I changed clothes. I said, okay, well, what do you usually wear around the house? She said, she said like sweats and T-shirt or whatever. I said, okay, but at some point you decide to go get some milk. And she said, yes. I said, and I said, you know, when I met you that night, you were dressed very nice. I mean, I can't, I'm not, it's not a sexual statement. I said, but you were like in blouse and, and slacks and your hair was done. I mean, I mean, the, I'm not, again, there's nothing, no law against going to get some milk and dressing up and looking pretty. I said, but the, why did you change from your at home clothes into this outfit? She said, well, I just did. I just did. I said, okay. And I said, so what happened then? She said, I told you, I drove and I got to the red light and I had, I had to wait. And um, when I was waiting at the red light, then they came up on me and put the gun on me and uh, forced my door open. The other one forced us way in the passenger side and, and, and they kidnapped me and made me get in the, in the back seat. I said, all right. I said, so you're crystal clear on this much. I said, can you give me any descriptions on them? She said, I can't remember. Uh, I just know I was stopped at the light. I said, all right. I said, let's talk about that. I said, we're talking about, and I named the roadway, and I said, when we're talking about this light, and I drew the diagram on the paper. I said, you're telling me you were sitting right here waiting to turn, and that's it. She said, absolutely. And I said, all right. And they got your ass now, motherfucker, because now I know she's lying, right? But proceeding, I said, and and they drove you somewhere. I said, you never been to this place before that they took you? And she said, I've never been there. I said, all right. I said, and you walked all through the fields after the rape was over. I said, you can't tell me anything. I said, you, you said, they forced you in the back seat. They took turns with you. She said, that's right. And And, and I said, then they kicked you out. She said, yeah, that's right. I said, well, were you naked when they kicked you out after the, the rape? And she said, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. She said, I just went to that house. I said, okay, so you go to the house and uh, tell me about that. I said, I found the spot, right? And I said, yes, you can see the house lights from from that spot. And I showed her the photographs of the spot, y'all. And, and she was like, I can't tell you if that's exactly it. And I said, well, Look at the ground. Look at the pictures on the ground. And it's just like, what? I said, everything's wet. There are fresh tire tracks from your van in that spot. I said, what don't you see on the ground? She said, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, what don't you see on the ground in this muddy area? She said, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, I don't see your fucking feet print. I said, and on um, top of that, when I meet you, in those people's living room, there's no mud on your clothing. There's no you, uh, mud on your blouse. Your clothes weren't wet. Your shoes weren't muddy. I said, now, hey, how do you explain that they kick you out of the van, naked or not, and you walk from there all the way to this house, scream rape, but you got no mud and no water on you? And she stopped and looked at me. She said, we, we you called me a liar? I said, well, well, I said, I'm not calling you a liar. I said, well, I said but I'm, I'm telling you, that fucking dog doesn't hunt for me. I said, now, look, if it's a trauma, traumatic situation and you got it wrong, that's possible, right? I said, but you, the, the, the explanation you've given thus far, that shit ain't right. And she was like, well, maybe it, it happened another way. I said, well, tell me what way it happened then. She said, well, um, maybe it wasn't right there. I said, well, what about going through the walking through the fields and all that? She said, well, maybe I didn't walk through the fields. I said, oh, motherfucker. And, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, right? I said, but well, you need to tell me what the fuck happened. I said, if you didn't get put out on that location, where were you? What happened? And she said, I don't know. I, she said, but I think they took off in the van, and I must have jumped out right in front of that house. I said, okay. I said, so how fast was the van going? She's like, what do you mean? I said, well, how fast was the van going? I mean, I said, what door did you jump out of? I mean, now I started hitting her, boom, 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 question after question, question, question. She can't think fast enough, y'all, to come up with answers. I said, so you're telling me, you know, 
they they done raping you, you're naked, or you're trying to get dressed, and now they're driving off, and all of a sudden you just jump out. And uh, she said, it would, have been the side, it would have been the side door. I said, okay, you jump out the side door, man, while it's rolling, while it's moving. I said, did you land on your feet like a cat thrown off a building, right? They're going to land on all fours. I said, did you land on your feet? Did you do a tuck and roll? Did you fucking, what happened? Y'all, she couldn't say dick because she knew I had her. Her clothes had no mud and stuff on it, right? And she just, she was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I said, okay. I said, listen to me. I don't believe you're a bad person. All right. She said, well, I'm not. And her arms are all defensive, crossed, and she's shaking. I'm not. I'm not. I said, I said, listen. I think that. Let me talk to you hypothetically. All right, and tell you a different scenario that may have happened. And if this fucking scenario is what happened, you need to tell the truth. I said, I don't give a shit what goes on between you and your husband or anybody else in the world, but I'm going to tell you the scenario and you let me know what you think. Dead silence, y'all. Dead silence. She stared me in the eyes. I said, okay. I said, don't, first of all, don't interrupt me. I said, take yourself out of this equation. You're, let's say you're a jury, you're a jury member, 12 person jury, and you're, you're at this trial, okay? This lady comes in. She, she comes from good people. She's got, she's raised a good family, got a good job, great husband, great kids and has lived a really good life. But at some point, for whatever reason, maybe she drank too much one night and somebody had had a piece of crack cocaine and she smoked it for the first time, at some point, for some reason, that lady tried crack. I said, she, I said don't say anything. Just let me fucking finish. I'm about to tell you it's the most important thing you're ever going to hear. I said, now... Crack cocaine is a real motherfucker, okay? I said, when you hit that pipe that first time, that feeling of euphoria, it washes over you. It takes away whatever pain or whatever it is that you're running from and you're trying to self-medicate from. Maybe you haven't been having fights with your husband. Maybe, you know, you're in trouble at work. I don't fucking know. Maybe this lady is in trouble at work. I don't know. But at some point, she tried her first crack rock. And from the moment she tried that first one, all she could think about was when and where and how she was going to get the next one. Now, y'all, she's sitting back, and I'm videotaping this so you can see if she's sitting when I'm giving that statement, she starts to sit back and cross her arms, which is still defensive, but she's aptly paying attention to me, eyes locked on mine. I said, listen, this does not make this person a bad person. Crack cocaine, smoking crack doesn't make you an evil person or this lady an evil person. I said, but the story guy is going to continue, okay? So you try crack cocaine. And hey, ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have hormone harmony. A formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of hormone harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. 
That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Just like everybody else in the world, you think it's fucking super, super, right? And But you keep thinking about how can I get it next? So probably you take a little bit of vacation money that's saved or a little bit of grocery money this week or whatever, then you start seeking it out. Now, where are you going to go find crack? Okay, let's say the first time you tried it was with a friend at a party or something. This friend has a respectable life or whatever. You're not going to call them. It may have just been an acquaintance. You're not going to call them all the time and be like, hey, man, hey, man, I need, I need some more crack, right? So this lady starts to seek out the neighborhoods that are known to sell crack and strikes up a friendship with the local crack dealer. I'm talking about a street-level dealer. I'm not talking about a multimillionaire driving a Ferrari. I'm talking about the dude that stands on the corner and slings dope, slings rocks, and stripes. That lady pays for it, right? And then she goes, smokes it, gets high, and guess what? You got high, high as fuck, but not as quite as high as you did the first time. And you do it again. And you find yourself, next thing you know, you find yourself rationalizing why it is that you're driving down into the hood to buy a crack. And then these, this lady, being an attractive female, these guys are trying to hit on her. They try to hit on her several times, try to say, hey, you know what? You don't have the money about it. Don't worry about it. Then give me a sexual favor. Give me a sexual favor. And no, this lady's too honorable for that. She keeps coming up with the money. Maybe she pawned some of her jewelry. Maybe she stole some money from wherever, but she's feeding an addiction. Doesn't mean she's evil. She's feeding an addiction. That addiction is a beast, and it's climbing all over her back. It's throwing away all logical thoughts and processes that she has. But the beast is there, and it's not going away. And all she can think about is getting that next rock. I said, so comes to a point where she doesn't have any money. And she goes back down there, and these guys that she thinks she can trust, she tries to get some rocks from them on Thursday. They don't have any. They won't get any more until Friday. She says, but I don't have any money. You know, we talked about before, or maybe they said it to her, and then when she said, I don't have any money. And they were like, well, you know, we can trade it for sex. Let's go party together. Y'all, you know, it's not like they call it, you know, you can be a whore for a crack rock. They never call it that. They call it partying. And, and so I said, so they'd say, hey, we can go party together. You know what that means, though, right? It means, you know, you need to look pretty, and we're going to have sex, and we're going to smoke rocks. And against everything that's in this lady's life, the way she was raised, the way everything came up, everything in the world inside her, all of the decency and the good things, the ways she was raised, that addiction said, yes, okay, I'll be back tomorrow evening. What time? They tell her a time. The next day, she's probably thinking all during the day, she's jonesing for that rock. She wants that high, but then she's thinking, mm, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to have to cheat on my husband. I'm going to have sex with these dudes to get high. She probably struggled with it all day long. And probably even after she got home, she could have gone and done this earlier. Maybe she was waiting for it to get dark. I don't know. But I guarantee you right up until that last moment, and she drove into that hood, and, and they climbed in her vehicle. She was still struggling against it until they pulled out that bag of rocks and shook it in front of her face and said, Mama, you ready to party? That's when she says, yes. They go to a place where they've been to before. I mean, I know for a fact that they've been to before, even though they had never had sex, there were sexual advances made towards this lady, but she always had some money to pay for the dope. And they go to this place, 
in pipes are broken out and rocks are smoked, sex is had, and once it's over with, the ladies getting dressed, they're pulling out to go back down to be dropped off. Once while she's getting dressed, guess what happens? The demon climbs back up on her and says, I want some more rocks. I want some more rocks. And they were like, bitch, you ain't getting no more rocks. She was like, but I just fucked and, and sucked or whatever. I just had sex like we agreed upon. And they were like, well, you just smoked like eight or ten rocks. And that's enough. And probably a little argument ensued as they're pulling out of this spot. And she says, get out of the driver's seat. I want to drive. He said, well, come on around. And that lady gets out, and they leave her right in front of that house. I so said, that would explain why this lady had no mud on her, any scratches. Now, she talks about coming across the field and all this when the cops are called. Well, first of all, then when she gets there, she's like, holy shit, they just drove off in my shit. And, and that's my family's van. What in the fuck am I going to tell my husband? Not only was I out here fucking and sucking for rocks, then now my shit's gone. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What, the, what is the only thing you could do? Cry rape. So you go to the door, rape, 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 call the cops. And maybe the lady didn't plan it out far enough in advance, but she damn sure didn't think. It was going to go down the way it's about to go down. I said, she lied. She had to suffer the indignity of the sexual assault kit. And the problem is, maybe she thought she was going to get Barney Fife, the detective, who was just going to, you know, blow this thing off or whatever. I'm not Barney Fife. You've been lying. The whole time. I said, now we just need to figure out where the fuck we're going from here. Because either you're going to fucking jail or you could walk. And we'll let the DA decide if they want to press any charges against you. And I said, you could tell your husband. You can go home and tell your husband whatever the hell you want to tell him. I don't care. But the fact is, I know for a fact that everything I just told you was the truth. Now, y'all, she's starting to cry. I said, what you need to do is get some help for your addiction. You need to get that fucking monster off your back before it really destroys your whole life, okay? I said, I don't care what you tell your husband, and the but the fact that you made a false police report about being raped and your vehicle being stolen, and what if we? What if a, a copper got out on on that vehicle with people who had, had it for a crack loaner, and shot somebody? Then you'd be principal to murder for lying. Yeah, you know, I said there's so many different scenarios you never thought of, sweetie, that would absolutely put you in prison. Your your kids will have grandkids by the time you get out if you live that long. I said now you need some help. That can be arranged. You know, I'm sure you have health insurance. And she shook her head. I said, I know, you know, we can, they can get you help for the crack cocaine addic addiction. I do not, I cannot promise you what the district attorney is going to do about the false reports or anything else. And I said, but I can tell you this. You tell me the truth, and I can tell you that I personally will not arrest you today. I said, I'm not saying that I'm not coming later on with a warrant. I'm going to have to meet with the district attorney. I said, but the best thing you can do is tell the truth. The guys, they're under arrest already. I said, I know, you know, I know, and they will have to answer the charges for stealing your vehicle, period. And I said, I don't, I don't think the passenger knew the guy was going to haul ass and leave you. And but the, and other people that were found in possession of your van, they're, they're going to have to answer those charges if the DA decides to press it. I said, but you – were raised too honorable, you're too good of a person to have these people be looking at life for kidnapping and raping you when it just didn't happen. It 
all this shit is because of your addiction. And, bro, she just broke down. And she really started crying. And she said, I'm just fucking tired. I'm so tired. I'm, I'm so tired. I said, well, tell me what happened. She said, you already know what happened. She said, it happened just the way you said it. And I said, well, we need to put it on tape. And I said, then I'm going to let your friend take you home. And, and I said, but before you even say it, don't ask me about the van, okay? I said, you can tell your husband that we're processing or whatever the fuck you're going to tell him. I'm not getting involved in that bullshit. That's not my job. I'm not your marriage counselor. I said, but the deal is what's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. I said, you've been lying the whole time. And she said, yes, I have. And she said, I need help. I need, she said, I can't stand it. I think about crack all day long. I never thought I would be this person. And she said, will you help me? I said, I'm not going to hurt you. I said, if you have to answer, if I have to come get you and put you in cuffs, it'll be because they're not going to let it slide because of the seriousness of what you reported and the resources you wasted, et cetera. I said, but I need you to put it out in your own words. And y'all, she did it. She told the whole story from the beginning. The first time she smoked, which was at a friend's house at a bonfire or something. Somebody had one, and she hit it that one time. She said, I was fucking hooked. From that point on, she said, all I can think about is, oh, my God, I want to try it again. I want to do it again and again and again. And she said it grew, and she said she absolutely was spending family money, kids' money. It sold some shit, and then she said it just got to the point where when they offered her sex for crack, she said, yeah. But she also said she didn't think she got enough crack for the sex that she gave. And, but she admitted to lying about the vehicle and everything else. So what did I do? I let her walk. I, I went and called it in and talked to some people, et cetera, and whatever, and told them what I was going to do. But then I came back, and I said, you, you know, you can go home with your friend. So you can call back up here tomorrow. Once I would talk to the powers that be about the ban and whatever charges you're going to take, et cetera. And that's it. You know, so let her go home. As far as I know, this is what happened. She, I, I saw her once, like, it was a couple of years later, and I was in a store in that small town. I just, and I never stopped there at that store, but I stopped to get, I don't remember what it was. Doesn't matter. I saw her, and she looked great. And she came up, and she gave me a hug, and she thanked me, and she, she obviously, I didn't, I never arrested her for her. I don't know what the DA did or didn't do or who she knew or who she didn't know, but she said she'd been clean for, you know, however many years now that she got the help. Her and her husband were still together, and she hadn't touched the shit since. So she's still going to, you know, to meetings, and she thought about it all the time, but she had Jesus in her life, and the, the crack cocaine ruled her no longer. So, but the main thing was the rape, the kidnapping, all that. This is not true. And I'm going to conclude this episode of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. And I did not make it to my second story, so I guess I'll tell that one next week. And it's a pretty damn good one, y'all. Totally different scenario, but very interesting. So stay, stay tuned for that. So I want to thank everybody for, again, for me winning the 2021 People's Choice Podcast of the Year for Best Male Host. It was People's Choice. Y'all made it happen. It's your award, not mine. Thank you so much for doing it. What a huge blessing, right? Y'all, check out our Real Life Real Crime Community app. If you like the crew page, which has 35 or 36,000 members on it and all that true crime shit that's in that private group, uh, or you like the Lanyap page where you can sell stuff or you know, any of our pages. We have that all in one spot in the Real Life Real Crime Community app. Go to the App Store, download it, and that includes it has patron levels, y'all, which are called convict levels or tier levels. And you want to swap over your patron membership, email Cindy, or there's instructions on there that make it really easy. It's just a much better experience. There's so much more than you can get on any one of our single pages, and I'm on there every day. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I hit it up and try to, you know, I go in and say something to the different groups, et cetera. And I'm like, 
this week I'm gonna be boiling peanuts and doing a lot of uh, making jerk and a lot of different shit that I'm gonna put on the different pages that are within that real life real crime community app. It's not just an app where you go listen to the to the episodes. It's an app that's gonna have or has everything. Just go check it out, including the store and whatever. So, um, so y'all will be putting up a lot more videos. There are episodes, videos will come out like a week or two after the audio versions drop on our YouTube channel. So y'all check that out if, if you want to watch me kind of having a hard time sitting here looking at myself while I'm doing this, but on the screen. But anyway, you can do that. And that's shit. I guess that's it. I've said enough for today. And um, if you are a lifer from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and you want to become an organ donor, go to LOPA.org. That stands for Louisiana Organ Procurement Agency. LOPA.org takes about two minutes. Sign up, be an organ donor, save a life. It's you don't have to be from Louisiana, y'all, and give the gift of sight, save a life, and everything else. So with that, I'm Woody Overton, your host of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. And until next time or ever, don't let me catch you down on murder by you. Peace. <laughs>